This is a video t tutorial of my book, Wanting More. In Australia, it's called Jamila. Okay. Now, this story, I could not have written it without first having written this story called The Roses in My Carpets. You see, this, this story is about my Afghan refugee foster child. I got a chance to meet him about uh, in 1991-92. Um, what happened was I went to visit him in a, in a refugee camp in Peshawar, Pakistan, and I took a tour of the camp, and I met this boy, and I wrote the story based on that meeting. Now, what happened was when I finished writing this story, I thought, you know, I don't want to be like some authors. Uh, some authors, they go into these poor, poor areas. They, they write these uh, stories about these desperately poor people. And then they, po they, you know, they pocket the money and they win all these awards and they po pocket the money. I thought, no, this book, The Roses in My Carpets, it should be used to help other refugees. So I started doing that. Now, one of the one of the things that I did was I ended up using the money from an, uh, the third publisher I got. Like this publisher, th this book was published in Canada, U.S. It was also published in Japan, and I took I I got some money from a third publisher that took on the publishing of the book, and they gave me a total of four thousand five hundred dollars for the rights. With that money, we helped set up a library in an orphanage in Afghanistan, in one in in Kabul. Now, that orphanage, they ended up sending me a report on the children in crisis in this, in this orphanage. And there was one girl's story in particular. It broke my heart. What happened was, it was just a paragraph in the report. And what happened to her was that her mother had died during the war. Her father got remarried. The stepmother didn't want her. So the father took her to the marketplace and he left her there. And she ended up in the orphanage that I had sponsored the, the, the had, I had sponsored the library. Now, coincidentally, like, I mean, this is what I mean. Like when, when things are happening in your life, sometimes certain, you read something and it will just hit you like a brick in your face, like just wham. And what happened was that this, uh, when I read this, uh, it, within my extended family, one of my very close relatives, she was going through her own issues. What happened to her was that her uh, her husband ran off after 19 years of marriage. Her husband ran off with another woman. And uh, this was a year before she was diagnosed with breast cancer. When she was diagnosed, uh, she had two teen kids. And when she passed away, her kids were left with a deadbeat dad. It was very, very tragic. And it was happening around the same time that I received this report about the children in crisis. And I thought, wow, look at this. It's the same story. It's the same story, different st on the other side of the world. And it was really unusual because um, given the fact that Afghan culture, like the families are very, very, uh, they stick together. They're very family oriented. And I thought, how could a, a father do this to his, his daughter? It was like unthinkable. This kind of abandonment, abandonment just was unthinkable. And yet here in my own family, uh, it had happened as well. And the guy who did this, you know, this relative's husband, I always liked him. I always thought he was a really nice guy. I couldn't imagine that he would turn around and do something like this to his own children. And it got me thinking about my own father. You see, I grew up in really, really difficult situations. When my parents came to Canada, it was 1965, and it was it was really hard. My father was a tool and die maker. In England, he was making pretty good money. Um, and in fact, in Pakistan, we were actually richer in Pakistan. When we came to Canada, the first few years were incredibly difficult because he had a really hard time getting a job. And then there were various uh, problems that arose and everything. And then uh, at one point, he lost his job. When we first got to Canada, he got a job for about $7 an hour. Within a year of buying the house in Dundas, I, I grew up in Dundas, Ontario. Within the year of buying the house in Dundas, he lost his job. My father lost his job. And by this time, there were four kids in the family. Like There was my mom, my dad, and four kids to feed. And there was no money coming in. Uh, he went out, He he. At, at first he had gotten a job for $7 an hour, which doesn't sound like much now, but back then that was actually really good money. Lost his job, now there was nothing. So he went out and he got another job, only this time it was only for $2.35 an hour. He had to feed a family of six people on $2.35 an hour. 
most of the time when I was growing up, we would we would eat dill weed and potatoes. At the end of the month, when they uh, paid their bills, there was only five dollars a week left over with which to buy food for six people. You know, we were really really poor. And it got me to thinking, and I mean, I looked at, when I went to Pakistan in particular, I looked at what my father had taken us away from, because it was brutal growing up in that small town, being so different, being Pakistani Canadian, and everybody's white, and you feel dirty, and everything like that. It was really, really hard. And I asked, I, only when I went to Pakistan did I really see what my father had taken us away from. And I, and I got a new found respect for my father, for having the courage to emigrate to a country that was, like he didn't know the language, he did it for us. He always did it. He always said that he did it so that we would have the educational opportunities that weren't available to young girls in Pakistan. <laughs> and I, I couldn't figure it out because my here my relative's husband, whom I admired so much, who I thought was actually a pretty good father, he had run off on his children. I never imagined he would. I always thought he was a good father. I never, I never uh, saw him hitting his kids. I never saw him being brutal or anything like that. My father, on the other hand, you know, he was a typical Pakistani father. A lot of Pakistani parents, you know, they use corporal punishment. It's, it's just kind of like expected. And I always thought my father was kind of hard. You know, he was like hard. And yet my father, under those circumstances, he had not run away. And I couldn't figure it out. So what I did was I went to my father one day and I said, I asked him, I said, how come you didn't leave? You know, this guy left. How come you didn't leave? And my father said something very important. And in fact, what he said turned out to be the theme of wanting more. It's in the first chapter. I kind of quoted from him. You see, this is what my father said. He said, you know, um, we are made out of uh, clay. When God first created Adam, the first man, he fashioned him, he molded him out of clay. And we are the children of Adam, so we're made out of clay. When you have a clay pot and you want to make it strong, you put it in the fire. And if you take the clay pot out of the fire too quickly, it will crack and it will be useless. So I figured, you know, we're made out of clay. And I thought, this is like my firing. I have to be patient. I have to wait until God takes me out of the fire. Otherwise, I will crack and I will be useless. That's why I never left. And when he said that, I thought, wow. And that, like I said, that became the theme of wanting more. Wanting more is about a girl who is abandoned and she's going through her firing. She is trying to emerge through, from her firing without cracking and without being useless. That's what this story is all about. It was uh, it was nominated. Well, it won the Middle East Award, and it was up for about fifteen different awards around the world. Uh, we've sold the rights to uh, Italy, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and now India. India is publishing the book as well. Um, in Italy, it sold so well. I went there in 2009 and I launched the book there. I recently did a tour. It was on the Battle of the Books in the States. It's done very, very well. It is always remarkable to me how universal this story, the story of this poor Afghan girl really is. And it's, it's a tragedy that this kind of situation is happening more and more to our young people. That's the story behind Wanting More. Thank you for listening.